Just so you know, they're supposed to be rubber bands, but if they're not there. No one cares. Banned. You're banned from the server. Yeah. The name of the game is to build, mod, and code po to beat the turd, turd tumble battle. battle. Give me some exciting stuff in the world of fusion. In terms of how po ranks on the technical fronts, I'm calling it. 50-50, build code. Let's go. <laughs> All right, you're gonna start with your best IQ kit and the path to po lies in the stretch build PDF. Or you can watch this vid, up to you.
Mama mod time. Meow, meow, meow. So to mount your touch LED, you're gonna mount your touch LED to the corner connector with the four connector pins. You can attach it to this beam on the back and plug it into the port of your choice, which Ellie's doing port eight. All right, and next we're gonna mount an ultrasonic sensor, which uses sound waves or pings to measure distance. It opens up all kinds of possibilities. All right, so you're gonna grab an ultrasonic sensor and two connector pins, and then mount the ultrasonic sensor into the rear plate, then plug it in with a cable. Ellie's doing port two. All right, click the link in the description to go to the family-friendly CAD tutorial for Poe. CAD your heart out and then pop back over here when you're done. All right, y'all ready for some code? Cause I know I am. So let's start off by opening up the old mod kit and mod kit link and naming and saving a new project. So now I can drag in the hardware components we'll be using. We have a drivetrain as usual. And since the Turtumble battle has a tally out period, we actually need a controller too. Now we can drag in two rotator components, which are Poe's arm and claw motors. And for silly fun sensor time, PM, we'll need a distance sensor and a touch LED. So now you can enter what port numbers your components are plugged into on the brain into ModKit. So the Turtumble battle has two parts, autonomous mode, which we also call auto, and teleoperated mode, which we also call teleop. During autonomous mode, the robot follows pre-written commands that you programmed. In teleop mode, the robot is controlled by a driver, and that's you! When you run your code, Po will lower its arm so you can load a turret into its grasp. When you activate auto, Po will back up until it senses the trash can, and then when it does, it'll turn around and deliver the turret into the trash can. Boom. During teleop, the objective is to tumble all the rest of the turds into the trash can. Let's start with figuring out the easy part, which is our code for teleop. So in terms of coding the drivetrain, remember from Dipsy that there are two main ways of steering your robot, which are arcade drive and tank drive. So in arcade drive, one joystick controls the movement of the whole robot, and in tank drive, each joystick controls one side of your robot. So to program arcade drive, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is, under the drivetrain settings, change the A channel to drive forward slash backwards, and the B channel to turn left slash right. So the way this works is the a channel looks at how far forwards or backwards your left joystick has moved vertically or along the Y axis and translates that to your robot moving forwards or backwards. So the B channel looks at how far left or right your joystick has moved or along the X axis and translates that to your robot turning left or right. Also, if you want to drive with your right hand instead of your left, do the same but with the D and C channels instead of the A and B channels. If you want to use tank drive, just set the A channel to L or left drive and set the D channel to R or right drive. So it's pretty similar to arcade drive in the way that it works. Basically, the A channel just looks at how far forwards or backwards your left joystick has moved vertically or along the Y axis and translates that to the left side of your robot moving forwards or backwards. And the same thing happens with the D channel on the right side of your robot. Yeah, now let's pop in some nice chunky code so we can control Poe's arm and claw during teleop. Let's start with that pretty little arm of his. <laughs> Under the arm tab, drag in a one start block and we can actually control some settings right off the bat for the arm. So you can control max speed and max power. And I'm gonna use around 80% speed and 75% max power because we want to make it strong but not too strong. But you can mess around and find the settings that work best for your robot. So let's also set holding to on which means that the arm will hold its position against gravity. Now let's drag in a forever loop. So what a forever loop does is it runs through whatever code you put in it top to bottom over and over again. So what we want to put inside this forever loop is an if else statement to check if the L up button on the controller is pressed. And that's the button that I chose to control the raising of the arm but you can pick whatever buttons you want. So the way the if else statement works is if a certain condition is met or if a certain event happens, then the robot does whatever code we put beneath it, which in our case is rotate forward because we want the arm to lift. But the else part of the statement means that if the condition is not met, the robot will do whatever is in the else section. So if the L up button is not pressed, we also want to check if the L down button is pressed. So within the else section of the first if else statement, we want another if else statement. So for this new statement, if the L down button is pressed, we want to lower the arm. The last else is executed if neither button is pressed, and in that case we don't want the arm to do anything Thing, so let's just put a stop block in there. So now let's move on to the claw. It's the exact same logic as the arm code, but just a little bit different. So first you can put down a one start block. We'll want to set holding to on and the speed and max power to something relatively low for more precision. So next we can drag in the same forever and if else structure that we used for the arm. So for the claw, we want to check if the R up button is pressed and if it is, we want to rotate reverse to open the claw. And if it isn't, we want to check if the R down button is pressed. And if it is, we want to rotate forward to close the claw. And if neither button's pressed, we want it to stop. So more code will be added to the arm and claw tabs for auto and it'll start to get a bit crowded. 
So to keep it clear that this chunk of code is for Teleop, we can slap a comment above the armor claw code that tells us that it's for Teleop. Now children, comments are a very important TM part of every coder's life. Comments are basically little virtual notes that you leave for yourself or anyone who looks at your code to explain what's going on around these parts, comma, partner. But they're completely ignored by ModKit so it doesn't get read as part of your code. So now you can go ahead and test your Teleop code. This is some fun stuff, so don't let the silliness get too out of hand. <laughs> oh, I see you've tested your Teleop code. Well done! Now this is where auto-programming begins. Dun dun dun! So under the Touch LEDs Blocks tab, let's kick it off with a one star block. So as soon as the program starts, we want our Touch LED sensor to light up red, and we'll do this by creating a function. Remember kids, it's a secret box of commands that activates when we call it up using its special name. So now we can create a new function called setRed. So when setRed is called, we're going to turn on the Touch LED's light, and then we want the light to be set to red. And that's it for this function! So let's call it right after the one start. The next thing we'll want to do is lower Poe's arm in preparation for loading the turn. And we can lower it using a function. Let's pop over to the arm tab, and we can name this function something like arm lower. And when we call that function we want the arm to rotate down so let's plop in a nice rotate reverse blank degrees block and we found that around 400 degrees works pretty nicely so let's also set holding to on but we want to delete it from tally up over here since holding only needs to be turned on once and we want it for the very first arm movement all right you hooligans now back to the touch led tab after the light turns red let's call our arm lower function so now let's set up a forever loop with an if statement to constantly check if the touch led gets pressed so put in just an if statement and there are no else's here because nothing needs to happen if the touch LED isn't pressed. So if it is being touched, we want the LED to turn green to signal the start of auto. Go ahead and drag in that set color to green block, y'all. So let's create a function to kick off auto in the drivetrain tab, and real quick, let's call it right after the light turns green. We'll fill out the auto function in just a sec. So in the turd tumble battle, the autonomous period lasts 15 seconds. So let's set a timer, and after the seconds, we want the LED to turn back to red to signal the end of autonomous slash the beginning of teleop. So we'll call the set red function again. So to make sure that the teleop chunks of code only run after auto, we're going to change the teleop code for arm and claw from when start to a function that can get called. So let's make a function called teleop. And you can call teleop from the touch LED tab after autonomous has ended and after the light has turned back to red. Alrighty, so we are actually done with the touch LED tab, except we need to add comments to make really clear what's happening. Yep. That doesn't, that's not what it says, but is it fine? Yep. Now, if you recall, we created a function called auto, and next we can add commands to it that will execute when it gets called. Click on that drivetrain tab, y'all. So the first thing we need to do in auto is close the claw on one very special turd. Let's create a new function in the claw tab called claw close. So the only two blocks we need in the function are set holding to on, so that the claw motor will hold its position, deletes from tell you up, and rotate forward blank degrees to actually close the claw. And we found that about 90 degrees does a darn near perfect job of closing the claw. Take it back now, y'all, to the drivetrain tab. And let's call that function. We want to wait one second before executing the next command so that the claw close function can finish running before the next command is executed. So next we want an if else statement inside of forever loop. So in this case we want to forever check if the robot's getting close to the trash can and for that we'll use the distance that the ultrasonic sensor is reading. So if the distance that that sensor measures is less than 200 millimeters or about 8 inches we want the robot to stop. And we'll come back to add more to that in a sec. So if the robot doesn't see something aka the trash can within 200 200 millimeters of it, we want it to just keep driving backwards. So let's put a drive reverse block in the else section. Hey you, don't forget to add comments. So let's add a comment that describes what this function does. Alright, so back to what the robot does when a trash can is in range. After it stops, we want the arm to raise up. So let's create yet another function called arm raise under the arm tab. So all that needs to be in this function is the arm needs to rotate forward 400 degrees. Let's call it in the drivetrain tab and wait one second so the robot has time to raise the arm fully before moving on. So after the arm raises, the robot needs to spin around 180 degrees and drive forward a bit to position itself in front of the trash can for some good old fashioned and turd tumbling. You'll have to find the right numbers to fit your bot. So now we want the claw to open, so let's create a new function called claw open under the claw tab. When claw open is called, we want the claw to rotate reverse 90 degrees for a slick opening of the claw and subsequent tumbling of the turd. 
call it in the directory tab and give it a second to wrap up before moving on. So next let's have the robot back away from the trash can here and let's call the arm lower function to bring the arm back down in preparation for teleop with one second pause. Finally, the last thing we have to do is drag in a break command. A break command breaks out of the forever loop and moves on to whatever is below it. In this case, it's nothing, which is perfect because we don't want anything else to happen for auto. I cannot stress this enough, add some silly little comments. It will save you hours in the long run. Let's comment that these functions in the arm and claw tabs are part of our auto code and save. Now it is done. You can now test your autonomous routine and tweak it as needed, but don't you dare forget to save it after changes. I've received word that it is now what they call battle time. May the turret tumbling commence. All right, here's how it's gonna roll. You have four minutes total to get all the turds into the trash can. As you know, the first part of this battle is autonomous mode. Now Poe's mission is to deliver a preloaded turd into the trash can. So you're gonna set Poe down with a claw all the way open, run your code, load your turd. Only rule, you have just 15 seconds for this routine and no touching the controller during auto. Now the second part of the battle is teleop mode, where you are in control. You have three minutes and 45 seconds to get the remaining turnage into the trash can. Best of luck. This ain't no poppers robot. <laughs>